Hello, everybody. Today is uh, our first lecture on uh, introduction to chemistry. The name of the lecture is Atomic Structure. Atoms are basic units of matter, the building blocks of all substances. The idea that atoms exist goes um, back as far as the early Greeks, when Democritus talked about matter being made of invisible units. In early 19th century, uh, John Dalton, an English scientist, formulated his atomic theory to explain behavior of matter. Atoms are so small that they can be seen only with electron microscope, and even then, only the hint of their outline is visible. However, as small as atoms are, they can be broken down into a smaller subatomic particles. There are three main subatomic particles, the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. Very often I hear from students, they say that uh, they struggle with chemistry. The only reason that they do struggle with chemistry is because they forget the very basic things on the, that they have to remember, uh, that they learn in the beginning and have to remember through the whole course of chemistry. So let's start with basics of the basics. Actually, I'm going to tell you now um, uh, something that, uh, that you learn when you was uh, about 11 or 12 years old. And that is negative numbers. Remember, one my, um, um, minus one plus minus one equals minus two. In chemistry, it is so simple. We don't even uh, see how many minuses are there, right? All we care is what is going to be positive or negative charge, right? In this case, I said the word charge, and that's correct. We're going to talk about uh, how atoms are charged, right? Um, or could they be charged negative or could they be they charged positive? This is a very important concept in chemistry. Therefore, another question, three plus, so plus uh, positive three plus negative one, what is going to be equal? You will say plus two, correct? Or just simply two, that means positive. Okay, the whole idea here, you have to think, okay, if you have three positive particles and we have one negative particle, the overall charge would be positive. Let's take a look at this number. Eight plus minus eight equals what? Equals zero, which means neutral. Okay, we have eight positive particles, eight negative particles, and the whole structure will become neutral. Another thing that you have to keep in mind that unlike charges attract and uh, like charges repel, like if we have my positive particle and negative particle, they will get together. If we have two positive article, particles, they will move away from each other. If we have two negative particles as well, they also will move away uh, from each other. This is important because the opposite charges of protons and electrons hold an atom, an atom together. So I think I spoke a little bit ahead of the time. I told you that protons are charged positive and electrons charge negative. With this in mind, let's take a look um, at the structure of, we'll say, oxygen. I just choose it randomly from any other uh, atoms. So we have oxygen. Atom of oxygen, can, like any other atoms, has nucleus. We will shade it gray. What nucleus is made of is two sub, uh, of subatomic particles. One called neutrons, one's called neutrons. Neutrons are neutral, the word speak for itself. And other particles are protons. As I said early, protons are char particles that charge positive. Here neutrons, here protons. 
uh, the small dense cluster of uh, neutrons and protons is called atomic nucleus. What we draw now around is the electron shell. Oxygen has two electron shells. On each electron shell, we find electrons. Electrons charge negative. Now, what you see here is an electron cloud around the nucleus. These electron shells, they make up electron cloud. Protons and neutrons are about equal to each other in mass and are much heavier than electrons. Thus, protons and neutrons make up most of the mass of the universe. Remember, we talked about unlike charges attract and like charges repel. Keep this in mind because the opposite charges of protons and electrons hold an atom together. So we have here eight protons and therefore how many electrons should be there? Eight electrons. What you're looking at is the electron cloud here around the nucleus that is made of eight electrons. Right? Because remember, plus eight, I mean, a positive eight plus a negative eight equals neutral. So the overall charge of an atom is neutral. The number of protons in an atom is called the atomic number. And so each element has its own atomic number. So what would be an atomic number of oxygen? Eight. What is an atomic number of hydrogen? One. Look at the hydrogen. That is the simplest atom known. It uh, consists of only one proton and one electron. There is no neutrons. What will happen to an atom of hydrogen if it will lose an electron? Well, there will be one proton left. And that's what uh, we will refer to it, a proton. Uh, usually we abbreviate it as H plus, hydrogen positive, right? Proton of a hydrogen. But it's not an atom anymore. It is, and it becomes an uh, ion. So let's, uh, everything in repetition, and let's uh, try to answer this question. The electrons has what type of charge? Negative. Please remember this. This is basics of the basics that students very often forget and then they say that they struggle with chemistry. I know it's very simple. It sounds very simple, but the trick is to remember this. The next question is, the proton has what type of a charge? Positive. Next question. The neutron has what type of a charge? Neutral. Next question. The electron cloud has what type of a charge? Think what electron cloud is made of. You are right. The charge will be negative because electron cloud is made of electrons. The next question is, in the nucleus, what type of a charge? What nucleus is made of? Think, neutrons and protons. Neutrons are neutral and protons are positive. Therefore, the nucleus will be chair will carry what charge? Positive, correct. And the big question, what is the charge of an atom? 
the answer is neutral. Look at the atom of oxygen. It has eight protons and eight electrons. So eight positively charged particles and eight negatively charged particles. What is an atomic number of sodium? Remember what did we say? The atomic number is number of the protons. So the atomic number of sodium will be 11. Here we're going back to our atoms, right? Um, to these models of atoms. Now, the whole idea is the nucleus charge positive, the electron cloud is charged negative. Atomic number is number of the protons. And by this number, the periodic table is being created by a Russian scientist named Dmitry Mendeleev. He is often referred as the father of the periodic table. He called his table or matrix the periodic system. At that time, many scientists were trying to come up with their system to classi of classification of uh, chemical elements. But he is the one who came up with the perfect system. Why? Because all the elements are here are organized by their atomic number. Remember, at that time, when he was, came up with his periodic table, many elements were not known. So many numbers were absent. And that was a big question. Why is this? Do I make a mistake by organizing uh, elements this way? Turn out the empty spaces later on was filled in because scientists discover new um, elements. So he not only organized the uh, uh, elements and put them into a, a periodic system, uh, give them a periodic system, right? He is also predicted a new elements that have not been discovered yet. And here they are, all organized by atomic number. Hydrogen has one proton, therefore the atomic a number of the hydrogen is one. Now, uh, sodium has 11 protons, therefore the um, atomic number of the sodium is uh, 11. Let's take a look at other elements that we have here, helium, helium atomic number two, because it has two protons. Atomic structure. So let's summarize everything that we just discussed. Atoms are made of elementary particles such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. They quite often referred up as subatomic particles. The protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus uh, and in a core of the atom and the electrons are located in the electron cloud, the outer part of the atom. The electrons carry a negative charge, while the protons carry a positive charge. The name neutron speaks for itself. Thus, these particles have no charge. They are neutral. Here again, familiar to us models of atoms of oxygen and hydrogen, uh, as you could see, each of the electron here is marked by a symbol. It is not necessary uh, to put them every time on the model. Uh, from now on, if you see a small black dot on the orbital, you know it is electron. We don't have to put a symbol there. Here you see the models of the atom now without the symbol of electrons. And when you look at this, you see right away how many electrons are there in the electron cloud, right? We also call electron shells. We collectively call them electron cloud. So right away, you see there is eight 
electrons. Two electrons on the shell number one and uh, six electrons on the outer shell, or we call it shell number two, right here. Very often I will ask, ask you to look for unpaired electrons. And every time you hear the word unpaired electron, you think about outer shell of the atom, please, not inside the atom. Like for example, here, how uh, oxygen has two unpaired electrons. One is here and one is here, unmarried electrons, right? Now, here we have a couple, two of them together. So this is paired electrons, and this one's unpaired electrons. Don't count those that are inside, like in the shell number one, we're not looking inside, right? Only on outside. Later you will understand how important it is. For now, just keep in mind, important thing to look when we give characteristic to an atom is to look for how many unmarried electrons it has. If we look at the hydrogen, it's very simple. Hydrogen is the simplest atom. So uh, we have only one electron and obviously it doesn't have a pair. Sometimes we will omit uh, even the neutrons and protons in the nucleus. Why? Well, simply because if you look at the atom and you see a uh, number of electrons in the electron cloud, you are capable, you will be able to uh, say how many protons inside of the nucleus. Looking at oxygen, we see that there is eight electrons. Therefore, inside of the nucleus, there will be eight protons. Remember, the number of protons and electrons has to be equal because atoms are neutral. Keep this in, power, in, this in mind, very important. Uh, about the neutrons, I will tell you in a bit, from, in, in a couple of minutes from now. Let's take a look at the hydrogen. How many protons will be in the hydrogen? You can say right away. You see one electron, that means there is only one proton inside of the hydrogen. The only thing you have to remember is that hydrogen doesn't have neutrons. Now, uh, the <coughs> mass of the what makes up mass of the atom is mostly the nucleus because neutrons and protons, they're the heaviest subatomic particles. Electrons are so tiny so, uh, that they almost have no mass in the atom. Therefore, what makes most of the mass in the atom is uh, are neutrons and protons. And in hydrogen, it will be a proton because there is no neutrons in the hydrogen. Let's take a look at the sodium. Can you tell me how many uh, protons sodium has? All you have to do is count electrons. So how many electrons do you see? 11. Therefore, there is 11 protons within the nucleus of sodium. And there is 12 neutrons. Let's take a look at the chlorine. 17 protons and therefore 17 uh, 17 neutrons and uh, I mean 17 electrons and therefore there is 17 protons. In atomic physics, the Bohr model or Rutherford Bohr, uh, Bohr model presented by Niles Bohr and Ernest, uh, Ernest uh, Rutherford in 1913 is a system consisting of a small dense nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons, similar to the structure of the solar system. It is like there is a sun inside, right? And there is a planets going around it. So uh, it's a wrong, a little gives you a little wrong impression. We do this for convenience, right? So it's convenient to look at these models, uh, Bohr model or another 
a name for it, Rutherford Bohr model. Here is a Rutherford Bohr model of oxygen and hydrogen. What you have to keep in mind is that the electrons do not move around the atomic nucleus as planets around the sun. They jump from one place to another, more like fleas on an animal. So, uh, for example, here you see the electron. It doesn't mean it's always here, although it can jump on another shell and vice versa, from another shell to this shell. But most of the time they spend uh, in these places, in these shells. Here you could see the atom of nitrogen and carbon. How many uh, protons nitrogen will have? You will be right if you say seven, because we have seven electrons. How many protons carbon will have? You will say six, and you're absolutely right, because we have six protons. Atoms of an element can exist in different forms. Atom of the same element may have the same number of protons and electrons, but a different number of neutrons. These atoms are called isotopes. Carbon-12 and carbon-14 are isotopes. Carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, and carbon-14 has six protons and eight neutrons. As a result, they have a different atomic mass. Certain isotopes are used to date human artifacts. Other isotopes have important uses in medicine. Now we say everything in repetition again. So let's take a look. How many electron shell has the atom of oxygen? Two. Correct. How many electron shell has the hydrogen? One. Correct. How many electrons has the atom of nitrogen? Seven electrons. How many unpaired electrons has the atom of nitrogen? Please take a good look. Three, you see, here we have one on outer shell. Remember, we're always going to look at the outer shell. One, two, this is also single unmarried electron, right? Now, and here we have three, the third one. One, two, three. These two have pair on the outer shell, shell number two. How many unpaired electrons has the atom of sodium? Is the sodium atom. So how many unpaired electrons? One unpaired electron right here, right? How many electrons has atom of carbon? All you have to do, just count them, six. How many protons has the atom of carbon? Correct, six. How many protons has the atom of nitrogen? Seven, correct. What is the atomic number of carbon? Six. And the big question, what is an overall charge of an atom? The overall charge of an atom is neutral because the charge of the electrons balances the charge on the proton. So if electrons has a charge negative one, then the proton will have charge of positive one. Atoms are electrically neutral, meaning they have an equal number of protons and electrons. So if an atomic nucleus has 92 protons, like in uranium, 
then there must be how many electrons? The answer is 92. Nitrogen. What? How many protons in nitrogen? Seven. Sodium. How many protons in, the, in sodium? Eleven. How many protons in carbon? Count the electrons. Six. Keep in mind that element is a type of atom. What symbols do we use for elements? Well, there are some elements uh, whose symbols are the first letter of their names. For example, capital O stands for oxygen. Oxygen in Greek means acid forming. Capital C stands for carbon. In Latin, uh, carbon means charcoal. Capital H stands for hydrogen, and that is comes from Greek language and means water. Capital I stands for iodine, which means um, violet because of the iodine, vi iodine vipers. Capital N stands for nitrogen, and that is a uh, French word. Capital F stands for phosphorus, meaning morning star because four phosphorus glows in the presence of oxygen. Capital S stands for sulfur. Uh, sulfur means to burn in uh, Latin. Capital F stands for fluorine, which in Latin means to flow. There are some elements whose symbols are the first two letters of their names. Capital C, lowercase a, stands for calcium. Uh, it's a, uh, calcium is a Latin name and it means uh, lime. BR stands for bromine. It's a, it's has, the word has Greek origin and meaning stench. AL stands for aluminum. Aluminum is the Latin name for a, a bitter salt. It is a soft and a light metal. CI stands for silicon. In Latin, it means flint or hard stone. BA stands for barium and it is a uh, Greek name uh, and um, meaning heavy. Nickel stands for, uh, an I stands for nickel. Nickel in German means devil's copper or Saint Nicholas copper. It's when nickel was actually found by miners, they thought it is a copper and they thought that they've been tricked. That's why they called it uh, devil's copper. Now, there are some elements whose symbols are the first and the third letters of their name. And here is chlorine. The abbreviation, the symbol for chlorine is CL. Capital M, lowercase g, stands for magnesium. ZN stands for zinc. And in Persian, zinc means stone. There are some elements whose symbols are derived from Latin names. For example, in Latin sodium, uh, we say natrium. Symbol is Na. Please remember this. This is very important. Potassium. Latin name is Kalium. Symbol is K. Iron. Latin name is Ferrum. Symbol is Fe. Lead. Latin name is plumbum, symbol is PB. Plumbum in Latin means water work. Why water work? Because they use lead to make water pipes. Gold, Latin name is aurum, symbol is 
a u each element has an atomic number the atomic number is the number of protons in the atomic nucleus in an uncharged atom the atomic number is also equal to the number of electrons the atomic number is written as a subscript of the left side of the element symbol the atomic number is a combined number of neutrons and protons in an atomic nucleus. It is written as a subscript of the atom symbol. Here you see helium. So what is there on the uh, upper left corner? Atomic mass. So atomic mass is number of protons together with the number of neutrons. As a subscript on the left side, you see atomic number. Atomic number is a number of protons. So knowing the atomic uh, mass and atomic number, we can easily uh, calculate how many neutrons are there in an element. Atomic mass and atomic number you can find in any periodic table. So let's see. The question here uh, asks us to write down the number of neutrons of the each element below oxygen so how do you know the number of neutrons in oxygen you simply you simply uh, subtract 8 from 16. to know new number of neutrons in phosphorus you have to uh, subtract 15 from 31 to know the number of new neutrons in uh, nitrogen you have to subtract 7 from 14 and so on with any element so looking at the periodic table you will know atomic mass atomic number and the number of neutrons in element here is this result of this simple subtractions now on this we will finish our short lecture on atomic structure I will uh, looking forward to see you for our next lecture on inorganic and organic compounds. See you later.